All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson. All right, so this is going to be the first lesson in a new series that I'm going to be doing where I'm going to be taking a look at the different medications that have an important role in critical care. And so to start off in this lesson here, we're going to be talking about epinephrine. All right, so epinephrine, which is commonly referred to as epi, also goes by the name adrenaline, which is more prominent outside of the United States. And this medication is probably one of the most widely known and commonly used medications in critical care. Now, epi is a non-selective adrenergic agonist. An agonist is essentially a receptor activator, and epi works on all major adrenergic receptors. So think here, alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, and beta-3 receptors, which are the major subtypes. Now remember what these receptors here are, alpha-1 activation is going to lead to that smooth muscle contraction, which is going to be located primarily in our blood vessels, and so this is going to mean vasoconstriction. Our beta-1 activation really impacts the heart, leading to both increased inotropy, which is going to be the force of contraction, and increased chronotropy, which is our essentially our heart rate. Now, our beta-2 activation, this is going to lead to smooth muscle relaxation, although this is located primarily in our airways. The way to remember these, think you've got one heart and two lungs, beta-1s for the heart, beta-2s for the lungs. Now, some potential side effects that your patient may experience with this medication are things like anxiety and nervousness, headache, diaphoresis, nausea vomiting, they can have palpitations, dizziness, weakness, shortness of breath, and tremors. Now, some potentially serious adverse effects that you want to be watching for would be in our cardiovascular realm, things like tachycardia, hypertension, cardiac arrhythmias, uh, including ventricular fibrillation, and then within our neurosystem, uh, things like stroke and cerebral hemorrhage, including our subarachnoid hemorrhage. All right, now let's talk real quickly about the concentrations and routes of administration. The most common concentrations that you're going to see are going to be 1 milligram per ml or 0.1 milligram per ml. Now, I do also want to touch on our ratio formulation. So uh, one thing to know, though, since 2016, the USP has actually prohibited the use of these ratios for labeling. Um, but you may still see them out there, and you may hear epi being referenced in these ratios. So it does help to have an understanding for if you do hear and see it. Now, the two most common ratios are going to be our 1 to 1,000 and 1 to 10,000. And essentially, this ratio is a measure of how many grams of a medication are in the number of mLs that's listed in the ratio. So this sounds a little confusing, but let me give you a couple examples. So, for instance, our 1 milligram per mL, it would take us 1,000 milliliters to reach 1 gram, which is essentially 1,000 milligrams. So this is going to be our 1 to 1,000. Now 0.1 milligrams would take 10,000 milliliters to reach a gram, so this is going to be our 1 to 10,000. Essentially, we can think the higher the ratio, the less concentrated or the more dilute the mixture is. Now as far as the routes of administration go, epi can be given either IV, IM, subcutaneous, as well as inhalation. Alright, so let's talk about how we use this in critical care. Now, there are many different uses for epinephrine, but the most common uses in critical care are going to be for things like cardiac arrest, hypotension and shock, anaphylaxis, laryngeal edema and stridor, asthma, and then in combination with a local anesthetic. So let's go through and talk about each one of these here, and we'll start off with our use in cardiac arrest. Now, the main benefit of epi and cardiac arrest is going to be its alpha-1 activation, which is going to increase vasoconstriction and thus helping coronary perfusion. Our dose in this situation is going to be 1 milligram in 10 mLs, which is going to give us a concentration of 0.1 milligrams per mL, a total dose of 1 milligrams. This is also referred to as our 1 to 10,000 dose. You're going to find this either a pre-mixed rapid injection syringe or manually prepared. Now, really important if you are mixing this up manually, do not administer the 1 milligram per ml without dilution to the 0.1 milligram per ml concentration. 
This medication you're going to give IV push and your frequency is going to be one milligram every three to five minutes per our ACLS. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on and talk about using this for hypotension and shock. Now for this here, we're commonly going to use epinephrine as a continuous infusion, and we're going to get the benefit of our alpha-1 activation of vasoconstriction, as well as potential benefits of our beta-1 activation. You're typically going to find this infusion in either 1 to 4 milligrams in 250 mLs, which gives us a concentration of 4 to 16 micrograms per mL. And then our typical dosing on this infusion is going to go anywhere from 1 to 10 micrograms per minute. All right, so let's move on and talk about Epi's use with anaphylaxis. Now, the EpiPen is commonly known throughout our society, and while we can give Epi either uh, intramuscular or subcutaneous for this treatment, in the ICU, we're often going to be giving an IV push dose or an infusion loading dose, and then potentially following that by a continuous infusion. And the reason for this is that even giving this medication intramuscular can take some time for its onset, and really the pharmacokinetics can be quite erratic with this, so we have a little bit more control by giving the IV dose. Now here we're benefiting from the alpha-1 effects in supporting blood pressure during this massive vasodilation and shock that's associated with anaphylaxis, uh, as well as the vasoconstriction can help to reduce laryngeal edema. The beta-2 activation also aids in the bronchodilation as well as the potential benefits with our beta-1 activation. Now here the loading dose that you're going to be giving is usually 0.2 to 0.5 milligrams. So here think 2 to 5 mLs of a 0.1 milligram per mL concentration. And then our infusion dose for this is probably going to be 8 micrograms per minute. Alright, moving on. Another use for epi is going to be dealing with our patient's laryngeal edema and also cases where they have stridor. Now, while we can use normal epinephrine here, now typically we're going to use a mix of the two enantiomers, which is essentially mirror copies of the same molecule. And this is going to be of the epinephrine molecule, and this medication is something that we call racemic epinephrine. Now here, the racemic epi's alpha-1 activation is going to lead to vasoconstriction of those capillary arterioles, this is going to decrease the hydrostatic pressure there, and thus this is going to reduce that laryngeal edema. Now for this, a racemic epi is usually found in 0.5 mLs of a 2.25% concentration, and then we're going to administer this via a nebulizer for inhalation. Now we're often going to combine this with a steroid such as dexamethasone here. And so our dosing for this racemic epi is going to be the 0.5 mLs of the 2.25%, and we want to dilute that with 4 mLs of saline. Now, if you are using epinephrine and you're using the 1 milligram per mL epinephrine, then we want to dilute that 1 milligram with 4 mLs. If you're using a 0.1 milligram per mL concentration, then there's not going to be any dilution necessary. And then important to know with this is you're going to see an onset of action in about a minute. All right, continuing on from here, another use for epinephrine is going to be in the cases of asthma. And here, epi can be used for asthma when they really haven't responded to our other beta-2 agonists. And the benefit of epi here is really twofold. Now again, because of the alpha-1 activation, we're going to see a reduction in the laryngeal edema. As well as due to the beta-2 activation, we're going to see that bronchodilation. Now there are a couple of approaches for its use here. The first is to do it nebulizing, just like we would for the strider, so 0.5 mLs of the 2.25% racemic epi. Now we can use a systemic epinephrine dose, and here you want to consider a loading dose like you would with anaphylaxis, and then perhaps a continuous dose of 5 micrograms per minute, and then really titrating that to effect as needed. All right, and then on to our last use case here, and that is going to be in combination with a local anesthetic. Now this isn't something you might see very often, de really depending which type of ICU environment you work in. Uh, if you work in a trauma ICU, you probably are going to see this more than others. But essentially, local anesthetics can actually cause vasodilation, and this leads to the anesthetic actually leaving the local site and ultimately decreasing its effectiveness. Now, the way that epinephrine works here is because of the alpha-1 activation that we're going to see vasoconstriction in the area of that injection, and then this is essentially going to keep the anesthetic local and allowing it to provide its nerve-blocking effects for a longer period of time. 
Now for this use, we're commonly going to find it pre-mixed with either 1 or 2% lidocaine or bupivacaine. And then the epinephrine is going to be listed as a concentration of 1 to 50,000 or 1 to 100,000. And then for here, we're going to be giving this one subcutaneous injection at the site of action. All right, and that sums up our review of epinephrine. I hope you guys liked this lesson. If you did, please leave a like as well as a comment down below. Uh, if you're interested in more content like this, make sure and subscribe to the channel as well as share this video with other people you think might find it useful. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson in this series. Otherwise, in the meantime, make sure you guys check out a couple awesome lessons I'm gonna link to right here. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.